The sun rises over the modern city of Skyrenade on the planet Accord. Markets begin to spring to life, shutters tear open, and the city begins to get busy with people pouring into the streets. Everything is peaceful. However, the early morning atmosphere is suddenly destroyed as Des and Katarina, human-like life forms with pale blue skin, green hair and holes where their noses should be, sprint down the street violently, barging into people, knocking over weird looking fruit stands and generally causing disruption, running as fast as they can down the futuristic street. Police bots follow hastily behind, armed. Des and Katarina dart around the corner, sprinting. I told you not to be overconfident. I wasn't. I was just wearing my poker face. Poker face? More like smug face. It wasn't smug. It was engaged. They could easily tell we was cheating because of you. Oh, will you shut up? Great. Just great. Katarina and Des stop in their tracks after they dart around a corner. They have come to a dead end. They both look at each other worried. They can hear the police bots catching up in the distance. They look around searching for safety. There are two alleys which are blocked off, one by metal fence which leads to a building site, and the other to some weird wooden box. Katerina notices the box. Des, come on, let's hide in here. <laughs> that thing? Trust me, they wouldn't think we're that stupid to hide in here. Des and Katerina go down the alley and approach the box, which is in fact a blue police phone box. It looks completely out of place in the futuristic setting of Skyrenade. Katarina tries the door, and it opens. She quickly steps inside. Des hesitates entering, but Katarina grabs his collar and drags him in anyway, slamming the door behind him. Des and Katarina stare at the wooden doors from the inside of the blue box. They are close together, and haven't looked behind them to realise that this isn't a police phone box at all. But it is, in fact... The Doctor's TARDIS. Well, that was a close one. How the hell could they not sense that we're inside here? Well, that's probably because the shields are on full capacity, which engages the scanner decoder, and that stops any exterior sensors from being able to pick up life forms within the TARDIS. Des and Katarina slowly turn around, terrified. There, standing at the TARDIS console, proudly, is the Doctor, with Sophie standing intrigued by his side. Hello, I'm the Doctor. Oh, and uh, this is Sophie. Hello. <laughs> now, please, do tell me, what the hell are you two doing in my TARDIS? Doctor Who Dystopia Written by Lewis C. Baird Well, I'm waiting. Katarina and Des are looking around the massive console room. They are staggered. Where... Uh, where are we? Oh, I don't think they knew what they were walking into, Doctor. No, clearly not. 
<clears throat> You're in my ship. I literally have been here two minutes and already have people breaking in. What kind of planet is this? It's bigger on the... Yes, I know, yes. It's 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 bigger on the inside. Yeah. Why did you come in here? We, 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 were ju we were genuinely just trying to get away from, from the storm. I think that's what my dear brother was trying to say. It's raining cats and dogs out there. We didn't want to get soaked, so came in here. We're sorry for barging in. We'll just leave. Katerina and Des back away slowly from the Doctor and Sophie, towards the TARDIS doors. Wait a wee minute. But you're both bone dry? Yes, that's exactly what I was thinking. And those are definitely not instant dry coats. No, too primitive. Oh, they are. Just a bit worn down, you know. Yeah, exactly. We've had them a while now. Oh dear, well, I'd best get a look at this storm then. The Doctor makes his way away from the console and to the TARDIS doors. Sophie looks at the two strangers intriguingly. Yes, let's take a look at the storm. The Doctor and Sophie both go up to the TARDIS doors. Katerina and Des look at each other worried. The Doctor swings open the door and steps out into the alleyway, looking around and feeling with his hands for rain. Sophie does the same. Both of them stare smugly at Katerina and Des. Okay, okay. For goodness sake, we were escaping police bots. All right? Happy now? Oh, great. Oh, all right. Criminals. Mm, what, were they, what were they chasing you for? Des and Katerina step out of the tiles. Oh, we cheated at a poker match in Frankie Dabosky's casino. Oh, dear, you are in trouble then. Frankie Dabosky? Brutal gangster, ruler of the planet Accord, which is where we are now, I'm guessing, and if I'm not mistaken, we're in the city of Skyrenade. It looks pretty much like Earth. I mean, is this a good example of what all the other planets out there look like? No, well, planets vary. This one is just very, very far away, like you asked. Fair enough. So this Frankie guy, is he trouble? If the police spots find us, they'll imprison us for life. Frankie hates cheaters, especially in his casinos. Then why did you cheat? Look at us. We're broke. We have no credits left. We need money, or else we're going to lose our home and starve. God, that's awful. Mm. Well, that's a fair enough excuse. Frankie is one of those rulers who uses power to benefit himself. I got into a chess battle with him a few centuries back. I won, <laughs> but he still nicked my TARDIS. Oh, don't worry, I got it back, though, and uh, I may have freed his wives as revenge, yeah. One of those things. You're the one that freed his wives. There's a nine-figure bounty out for you. And that was a few years back, not centuries. A centuries for me, not for him. So you've been here before then? Yeah, just that once. And, um, yeah, quite honestly, I don't really fancy getting locked up. So perhaps it's best we find you another planet to visit. What about us? What about you? You can't leave us here to get imprisoned. Yeah, come on, Doc. Isn't there something you could do to help them? Oh. <sighs> well... Why don't you drop... Uh, sorry, what's your names again? I'm Des. And that's my sister, Katerina. Thanks. Why don't you drop Des and Katerina off at the nearest other planet? Oh no, that would be a horrible idea. This is by far the nicest planet in this solar system. It's best they stay put right here. Oh, I know! The Doctor scrambles back into the TARDIS and opens up one of the round things. Inside there is a random assortment of items. Wallets, glasses, binoculars, Barbie dolls and much more. The Doctor finds a silver metal card. Aha! Here it is. He slams the round thing shut and runs back outside the TARDIS where Sophie, Katerina and Des are still standing. This? is a credit generator card. If you place this in a card machine, you get unlimited credits forever. Now, I will give you this on one condition. What condition? You be sensible with it. Don't be greedy. That'll flag you up to Frankie, and then you're in prison for life. So be careful. I would advise the both of you to go get the appropriate funds, then go to the nearest teleport station and escape to the Mr. Nico region on the other side of Accord. There you'll be safe in the countryside. That's a definite deal from me. Same here. 
Thank you so much. You have no idea what this means to us. The Doctor carefully hands them the credit generator card. You're welcome. And good luck. And don't you be cheating in any casinos, you hear? Katarina smiles and walks away out onto the street cautiously. Definitely not. Thank you, you two. Come on, Des. Let's get out of here. In case any police spots return. The Doctor and Sophie smile. Des turns around and heads towards his sister, who is waiting for him at the other end of the alleyway. Suddenly... A rip in time comes from behind Katarina, blinding the Doctor, Sophie and Des. All they can see is a ghostly silhouette grabbing hold of Katarina. No! Get off me! Katarina! Des runs towards Katarina, just as he is about to grab hold of her. The rip in time gets brighter... And then it closes. Once it has cleared, Katarina and the figure have disappeared. Des falls to his knees. The Doctor and Sophie run up to where Katarina was standing. Doc, what the hell was that? The Doctor gets out his sonic screwdriver and scans the area. I have, I have no idea. It looked like a rip in time. It must have been a police spot tracked her down. It wasn't a police spot. It, it looked like... What, Des? What did it look like? It looked like a nun. The Doctor and Sophie give each other a worried look. Just as they do, the gate at the end of the alleyway across the way smashes open. Police spots point their guns towards the Doctor, Sophie and Des. TARDIS, now! The three of them sprint towards the TARDIS. The police spots begin to run and then they open fire, narrowly missing Sophie, Des and the Doctor. The Doctor holds open the door as Des and then Sophie enter the TARDIS. A bullet hits the TARDIS. Oi, watch the... Paintwork. The police spots open fire rapidly. The Doctor hurdles into the TARDIS, slamming the door behind him. The Doctor runs up to the console where Des and Sophie are already waiting. They're gonna get in. Not if I have anything to do with it. The Doctor runs around the console, flicking switches, and then eventually... So, that's us out of that mess. Now let's find out what the hell happened to your sister. You said you seen a nun. Well, that's what it looked like. I couldn't see what it was properly, only a shadow. And has your sister, um, uh, what, what, what is her name? Katerina. Katerina, yes. Has your sister Katerina had any problems with nuns in the past? No. Well, not as far as I'm aware. Doc, let's be honest. No matter the beef. Nuns don't usually just kidnap people in broad daylight. No, you're right, yes, maybe on Earth, but there are some mean sisterhoods out there in the galaxy. Well, that's messed up. But why Katarina? Of all the people in the galaxy? Well, that I don't know. Luckily, my Sonic picked up a signal, so let's put it in the TARDIS receiver and see where it leads. The Doctor puts his Sonic in a slot on the TARDIS console, and a hologram appears. The scan is initialising. Eventually, it shows the navigation coordinates and a red dot on a planet. The Doctor looks distressed. Oh, no. Not there. Where? Terra Mater. Where's that? It's known as the Planet of Death. You were right. There was a nun you saw. The Sisterhood of Mortem. They abduct people from planets all around the universe to dedicate to their god. Dedicate? You mean kill? Oh, surely not, Doc. Why do you think it's called the Planet of Death? So what do we do? We go get Katarina and stop the Sisterhood from doing anything to her. It's not as simple as that. There's thousands of nuns dedicated to the religion. If we go in there, there's a high chance we could never escape. It's worth a try. 
I can't just leave my sister to die, Doctor. I know, but... But what, Doc? You promised me before we left Earth that not another person would die on your watch. We have a chance to save Katarina. So let's save her. You're right. I did say that. I guess it's time to pay a visit to the planet of death. Not exactly the vibe I had for practically my first planet, but I guess it will do. The doctor gives Sophie a slight smile. He then puts in the coordinates and prepares the TARDIS for Terra Marta. Des looks at the doors of the TARDIS. Hang in there, Katarina. We're coming for you. Katarina opens her eyes. She is disoriented. Everything is fuzzy. She concentrates on her surroundings, trying to understand where she is and what the hell just happened. Eventually, the disorientation stops. It's dark. The sky is a navy blue, with the stars shining brighter than Katarina has ever seen them. Around her are trees. She's in a forest. The trees that surround her are unlike anything she has seen before, not just because she's only lived in the city, but because the tree's leaves are a bright red colour. She attempts to stand, but as she does so, a nun appears from behind the tree she is leaning on. The sister pushes her down, restraining her to the ground. You will stand when I ask you to stand. Understood? Get off me! You will rise in a moment as I take you to Mother Superior for inspection. Where the hell am I? You are on Terra Mater. The home of our sisterhood. Well, I hate to tell you, but I ain't religious. So I think you've made some sort of really bad mistake. We make no mistakes. Is that so? Then why am I here? You're here to dedicate yourself to our Lord. I really don't think so. I wouldn't challenge the sisterhood. You'll find that you'll feel more pain doing so. Now wait here until you're called upon. Fine. The sister walks away to a large gap in the trees where a group of nuns have congregated. Katerina looks around and starts to panic. She gets up and begins to walk in the previous direction of where the nuns have congregated. Just as she turns around and goes behind the tree where she was leaning on, A woman with black hair, wearing an all-red suit, blocks her path. Katerina stands, scared for her life. Now, you wouldn't be attempting to leave, would you? No, I just had to stretch my legs. Ah, I see. Well, I would advise in future, you sit until given permission to rise. Not that you will have that virtue for much longer. The sister that previously spoke to Katerina approaches from behind. Mother Superior Frouse, my apologies for the insubordination of this barbarian. I demanded she stay put until your inspection. Oh, never mind, Sister Sicarius. I have inspected her now. Prepare her. She has been chosen. Certainly, Mother Superior. Right away. Sister Sicarius smiles deviously at Mother Superior Frouse. The sister then begins to drag Katerina away. Katerina struggles. Wait, prepare me for what? Prepare me for what? Elsewhere, in Terra Marta's forest, the Doctor opens the TARDIS door and pokes his head out looking for any of the sisterhood. The coast is clear. He walks out with Sophie and Dares following him. He locks the TARDIS door. (sighs) Right. Well, I think it's a good idea for the old girl to be on show, especially with the sisterhood about. They might try to infiltrate her if they realise it's a TARDIS. 
So, other than Earth, the rest of the universe see a police phone box as a spaceship? No, no, well, no, 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 not quite. Let's just say some of my previous incarnations have been a bit loud and worked out what my ride looks like. Previous incarnations? I still think you're a walking contradiction. No, well, well, put it this way. I used to be, um, a bit careless and, uh, uh might have hacked off a, a, a lot of people. Really? I mean, you're pretty discreet now. Well... Most of the time. Oh, well, thank you. But, um... Oh, you should have seen my 11th incarnation. Well, 11th-ish incarnation. The entire universe is hunting him down. And he, he wasn't hard to miss. Tweed jacket and a bow tie. Even a fez at some point. Oh, what was I thinking? Anyway, it's, um... It's best to be safe rather than sorry. Sounds like you were making some bold fashion choices there. <laughs> you could say that. The doctor giggles, rolls his eyes, takes out a sonic screwdriver and Sonic's his TARDIS until it dematerializes. So where the hell is Katarina? I can't see anyone. Well, we're close to where the sister brought her. She should be nearby. Whoa, Doc! These trees are beautiful. Decorous trees. Yeah. The leaves never change colour or fall. How can you even make out the trees? I can barely see your head. Eternal darkness. So, we're going to need to adapt, I'm afraid. Yeah, the stars will guide us. I always have faith in the stars. It's a pretty place to put a chapel or church. Or wherever these nuns worship. No buildings, just forest. They're at one with nature. You know an awful lot about this planet. And, and sisterhood for, for never being here. One of my friends from my home planet was taken by the Sisterhood a long, long time ago. They never returned, so in honor of them, I, I did my research. But never did find out who the Sisterhood worship or why they sacrifice people. Perhaps I will this time. I'm going to warn you now. I'm not very good with nature. I'm a city boy. Well, countryside and nature is exactly what I'm good at. So you're in luck, mate. <laughs> I think we need the luck of the Irish on this occasion. Hmm. Come on. Let's go this way. I think I can see light in the distance. Meanwhile, close by, Katerina has her hands and legs tied with a rope. She is on her knees. She has cloth of some sort covering her eyes and her mouth. Even though Katerina cannot see it, there is a large tree in front of her. The leaves are orange and luminous. Tree roots which look like veins are spread across the forest floor, connecting to the tree. They are also a luminous orange. There is a person at either side of Katerina, in the same situation, captured by the Sisterhood. Mother Superior Frau stands in front of the tree. Many sisters stand behind the captured. Sisterhood of Mortem. Today you stand before me as witnesses of the most sacred practice in this galaxy. In front of me are the Sindh. They have been chosen by our Saviour to give their lives so that the universe can regain some purity. Such as the purity in which we live our lives in this here place. You know how this ceremony goes, and the graces it gives us. I wish you to continue your mission in which our Lord Mendatum has graced upon you. Sister Azenus, you may sacrifice your chosen one first. Sister Azenus comes forward from the congregation of nuns. She goes to the person on Katerina's left. They have neon pink translucent skin and are wearing rags. Sister Racinus takes off the person's blindfold and the cloth that is covering their mouth. Please, I beg of you, I will do anything. Let me go and I will not tell anyone that I was here or seen anything. Hush, child. Death comes to us all. But for you, you have been chosen a glorious fate. 
one which promises that your afterlife shall be rich and content. Please, I am begging you. I'm a father. Then you shall do your offspring proud. The sister pulls out a knife in the shape of a cross. The victim panics, but it is too late. The sister cuts the victim's throat slowly. They collapse to the forest floor. Their blood drips into the luminous decorous tree veins. The veins get brighter as it seems to absorb blood from the victim. The energy from the victim's blood travels to the large tree behind Mother Superior Fraus. Sister Asinus rejoins the congregation. They are on their knees, bowing to the tree. As the energy hits the tree, it glows bright orange. Mother Superior Fraus, who is still standing, closes her eyes. It seems like the energy is impacting her. When she reopens her eyes, she looks at Katerina with a piercing stare. Well done, Sister Azenos. A worthy sacrifice. Sister Sicarius, it is time for your sacrifice. Please step forward and grace our Lord. Sister Sicarius steps forward. She takes off Katerina's blindfold and cloth around her mouth. Right, you listen to me. I don't know how the hell you think- Silence! You have been chosen and will be graced. There is nothing you can say that will stop that. Oh, I'm not so sure about that. The Doctor steps out of the shadows and into the light from the Sisterhood's Tree of Worship. Des and Sophie follow slowly behind him. Who dare interrupt our ceremony? Oh, uh, um, that would be me. Sorry. Sorry about that. Uh, but from what I can see, I'm just in time, actually. Step back from her, please. No one interrupts our ceremony. Sisters, restrain these imposters. No, 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 no. I wouldn't do that if I were you. And why would that be? Because then you would get me even more angry. And you really don't want to see me when I'm angry. All right, then. Oh, so, so, I'm doing a bit. Don't let my sister's habits fool you. You are surrounded by hundreds of deadly assassins who have a mission in the name of our Lord. The Doctor walks slowly, closer to Katerina. Oh, you see, I'm not a fan of assassins, especially ones who are killing for no cause at all. You think the power of worship is meaningless? No, not at all. I'm all for people having beliefs, just not ones where they find killing necessary. Those are weak beliefs. <laughs> Maybe to you. Not to me. Sisters, as I said, restrain these imposters. The sisters go to capture the Doctor, Sophie and Des. The Doctor takes out his mobile device, which looks like a circular piece of glass that connects him to the TARDIS console. He holds it up as the nuns grab Sophie and Des. Get off me, you freak! Stop right there. You see this in my hand? It's a device which connects right back to my ship. I can aim my ship's laser cannons right at your big, beautiful tree. I reckon that would really ruin your ceremony. Yeah, correct me if I'm wrong. You wouldn't dare. Do I look like a man who breaks his promise? <laughs> Choose your next move wisely, sister. He means it, you know. I wouldn't test him if I were you. Mother Superior looks nervous. She looks at the Doctor, at Katerina, then finally, she stares reluctantly over to Sophie and Des. Release the imposters. And the sacrifice. But Mother Frau. Do as I say, Sister Sicarius. The nuns release Sophie and Des. The Doctor puts his portable console device back into his pocket. He looks down at the body laying on the forest floor, and the other victim. If I were you, Mother Frouse, I would release the other victim too and never abduct another person. You got your friend. Now leave. What do you gain from this? Killing someone in cold blood. 
You could scream it's for your god all you want, but there needs to be something in it for you, so... What is it? Power? Hunger for blood? Or maybe it's just insanity. Who are you to think you can speak to me in such a way? I'm the doctor. Look me up. You might find that your god has nothing on me. Is he always this intense? Yeah, pretty much. Our Lord is the most powerful of all beings. Witness Lord Mendatum's true power. Mother Superior Frouse's eyes light up, a luminous orange. She raises her arms, and as she does so, the tree gets brighter, and the veins on the forest floor are light brightly too. The Doctor looks astonished. Meanwhile, the other three, Des, Katerina, and Sophie, look terrified. Do you have such power? Power as this, Doctor. No. The light fades from the veins, the tree, and in Mother Superior Frouse's eyes. I didn't think so. Now leave. The Doctor nods. He releases Katerina from her bounds, helps her up, and the four of them leave the worship ground. The nuns all stare at them. Mother Superior Frau stares at the trespassers with a disgusted look on her face. Let us continue. The Doctor, Sophie, Des and Katerina walk away from the worship ground. They all look shook up. Des is helping Katerina, who is limping away. Doc. We can't just leave that woman sitting there to get slaughtered. Sophie, you saw the power their Mother Superior has. That tree is connected to her somehow. She controls this forest. Thank God we've got you. I don't know what I'd have done without you. I am so glad to see you. Why the hell did they pick me? It's random selection. They just turn up on planets near an innocent victim and abduct them. It's been going on for centuries. I still don't understand why they are sacrificing people. Neither do I. It doesn't make sense. They have to get something from it, right? Uh, Perhaps they've been promised some form of afterlife or reward for their killing. It's still wrong. Were you really going to blow the tree up? Hmm? Oh no, no. The TARDIS don't have any weapons. It was a ruse. Worked, thankfully. Gave me time to think. The names. The names are all linked. What do you mean, Doc? Terra Mater, right? Latin for Mother Earth. Sisterhood of Morta. Morta means death in Latin. Their so-called god, Mendacium, that translates as lie. And even better, Fraus means fraud in Latin. What? Like Earth Latin? Yeah, yeah. Didn't you learn it? Languages wasn't my thing. Too busy learning about psychology. Even then. Who the hell learns Latin? I mean, I do. So, what are you saying? The names of this planet are designed by a human, and I don't think it's a coincidence that Mother Superior looks awfully human to me. She's lying to them. Either that or they're all in on it. But the power she showed us, that's not human. I know. I know, but it's something that she could have inherited from this planet. So, what are you saying? I'm saying it's time for her to lose whatever power she's inherited. Uh, oh. That. That, that that doesn't sound fun. I'm game. Good. Follow me. Mother Superior Frouse stares at the last victim. She has desperation in her eyes. Sister Ochidere, it is time for the final sacrifice. Ready, your chosen one. The sister emerges from the congregation and goes up to the sacrifice who is on her knees, bound with cloth over her eyes and mouth. The sister uncovers the victim's mouth and eyes. Please, I beg of you to spare me. I am not worthy of this execution. I I am a mother. I have an ordinary life. What you brand as normal is different from what we as faithful beings would see as normal or pure. You must be repented. The sister brings out her knife, which also looks like a cross. Just as she does so, a breeze blows through the worship. Oh, sorry.
sorry, am I interrupting again? Mother Frouse looks deeply angered by the Doctor's return. Was my Lord's power not enough to cause you to leave this place? I seen the fear in your eyes. <laughs> well, see, at that point I believed you to be a terrifying leader of the Sisterhood, but then my brain finally kicked in, and I realized you're just a big phony. Excuse me? Des, Katerina, and Sophie exit the TARDIS, staying behind the Doctor. How is your religion established? I do not see how that is any concern of yours, Doctor. Oh, for Pete's sake, answer his question. You dare speak to our Mother Superior in such a manner? You shall pay, sinner. Sister Ochidore, please return to your sister. I can handle this. Yeah, and in case you anger any more assassin nuns, leave this to me. Sorry, but she's really doing my head in. My friend does make a point. Stop avoiding the question. There is a legend that a traveler came to this world many millenniums ago and met our Lord Mendacium. He spoke to this traveler and told them the mission in which they must take on. Mendacium was dying. To become immortal, he then walked into this tree in front of us, and his spirit lives on. This mission has been passed on through generations, until finally, here we are. To keep our Lord's spirit alive, we feed him sinners. In return, he gives us a place to live. Ah, it's a lovely story. It's not a story. Oh, but it is. And who are you to make such accusations? Someone who can speak Earth's Latin. Mother Frouse's face drops. Not so confident now, are we? You are human. No, no, not me. Oh, no. Ooh, no. I mean, she is. Yeah, and and you are, aren't you? And what if I am? You're a long way from home. A new normal human would just join some random intergalactic sisterhood unless they're getting something real good out of it. Am I right? I get to live here. Yeah, but if you wanted a forest, there's plenty on Earth. Apart from with these trees, but they're not enough to slaughter for. Where on Earth are you from? Manchester. I came here in 1988. You're a long way from home. We're currently in 2021, so you've been here 33 years? No. But enough of chit-chat. I have duties to do, and you are angering me. Mother Superior's eyes light orange once again. As they do so, Des and Katerina take something out of their pockets and throw them at the tree. They stick. Mother Superior's eyes go back to normal, and she looks panicked. What was that? See, Sophie, I hate to say it, but you were kind of wrong. How come? Well, the reason I asked Katerina and Des to place explosives on the tree is because this tree, specifically, is very much worth staying on this planet for. Get away from it! Oh, hi, so? This isn't just any tree. Or decorous tree. Oh, oh, wow, this planet really does have a Latin theme. This is a blood tree. What does a blood tree do? Well, if someone makes a connection to it and continually feeds it blood, any blood, then the tree will make them immortal. Mother Frouse, is this true? No. Do not listen to this madman, sisters. He is a sinner. He seeks to damage our faith. Old lady, shut up. Yeah. 
You were getting bored of your high and mighty spiel. How did you come to this planet? Mother Superior turns from her nuns to the Doctor in a deep rage, with her eyes and even her veins lit in orange. Just leave, or I will rip you apart, Doctor. The tree burns brightly. Mother Superior Frau stares with fury at the Doctor, but the Doctor sighs. He turns to the tree and pulls one of its branches. Mother Superior falls to the ground with pain. Sisterhood of Mortem, this woman has been lying to you. She is a fake. She has been asking women like you to kill innocent people to feed her immortality. Just tell me how you got here, Frouse. All right. All right. A rip in time appeared in my home. I heard whispers coming from the rip. It was the tree calling to me. I walked through to follow the whispers, and the rip closed behind me. I was stranded here. The tree made a pact with me. It brought people here. People to kill, initially. And then I needed company, so I established the Sisterhood. The tree controls this planet. It grows fruit. It gives us material for clothing. And the trees give us shelter. The tree opens the rips in time. And now I can too. Mother Superior puts out her hand. And using her fingertips, she opens a rip in time. At the other side of the rip is her home, in 1988. She stares through with much sadness in her eyes. I had the chance to return. But if I do, I die. You've only been here 33 years. Come on, you're not that old. I have not been here for 33 years. I have been here for thousands of years. The rip took me four thousand years in the past. So if anything happens to that tree, I die. Mother Superior Fraus closes the rip in time. The other nuns all look disgusted at their own Mother Superior. I'm sorry, but enough is enough. The tree bargained with you to keep itself alive. It took you away from your life, and I get it, that's horrible. But you have murdered hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people, just to keep yourself alive. And for that, your time is up. Stand back! The Doctor, Sophie, Des, and Katerina scramble. Wait, no! Mother Superior Frouse runs towards the tree. After a few seconds, the smoke has cleared. Frouse is on the ground. She has aged horribly. She is practically just bones. The doctor kneels down beside her. Sophie, Des, and Katerina look on from a distance, and the nuns all look at each other, horrified, realizing their lives have been a lie. If I could, I would spare you, but the blood tree was the only thing keeping you alive, and I... I can't let it remain here. It would only guide another person here and a cycle would start again. Fear not, Doctor. For you have freed me. Mother Superior Fraus closes her eyes as she fades away. The Doctor stares solemnly at her body. He then looks at the tree, which is no more. The veins which once healthily lay on the forest floor, have curled up and began to die. The planet is turning grey, and the Doctor stands and looks at the rest of the congregation. Leave this place! It is nothing now but a dying planet. 
Your mission was a lie. From now on, you go on living a life of forgiveness, one which does justice to every victim you have killed in your time as part of this so-called sisterhood. If I ever hear of any sisterhood such as this again throughout time, I will return and do the same I did today. Be warned. I am sorry. To you, girl. My intention was to live a pure life, one which I believed serviced people, not just destroy them. I had to watch someone die today, all because of you. I hope you live with that for the rest of your life, suffering, because I know I will. Sophie goes up to the remaining sacrifice and releases her. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. It's okay. Everything is going to be okay now. Oh, come on. Let's get her home. Then you two. A few hours later, the Doctor, Sophie, Des and Katerina are standing outside the TARDIS back on the planet Accord. This time in the safe region of Mr. Nico. Well, I thought being caught by Frankie would be the worst thing to happen to me today. Guess I got that wrong. Listen, I'm just happy the Doctor and Sophie got you back. I don't know what I would have done if they Yeah, had. well, we don't need to think about that. Do you think that blood tree could grow back? Oh, no, not a chance. No, you, you and Katarina position those explosives perfectly. Yeah, nice aim. Thanks. Well, we, we really better go. Yeah, I've had more than enough excitement for one day. Yeah, you're telling me. I was expecting a lot from my first planet, but really not that much. Yeah, sorry, that was definitely not the nice, calm planet experience I had planned for you. It's fine. I'm just glad we could help you too. Well, you did. Thank you. Are you sure you're okay, Katarina? Well, you went through... <sighs> It wasn't easy. No, it wasn't easy. And that will stay with me. But knowing that the sisterhood has been disbanded will give me some reassurance. Ah, well, I'm, I'm glad I can at least give you that. Just in case anything like this happens again, do you have a number we could call? Come on, Des, we'll do just fine on our own. Bye. Katerina and Des walk away from the Doctor and Sophie. Bye. See ya. Stay away from casinos. We will. I'm, I'm being serious. Sophie walks back into the TARDIS. The Doctor smiles as he watches Katerina and Des walk off into the Accord sunset. He then turns and enters the TARDIS. Well, that was eventful. <laughs> You're telling me? Are you okay? Yeah, yeah, I'll be fine. I just think I need some sleep. I'm shattered. Oh, well, we can sort that. I'm sure there's a bed somewhere in the TARDIS. I think there is. Unless you 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 want to go home? Not a chance! Oh, good, because I was thinking... Sophie looks shocked. It's behind the Doctor someone has just teleported into the TARDIS. The Doctor turns. Standing behind him is a woman with short blonde hair, wearing a trench coat, with her back turned to the Doctor and Sophie. Wow, this place is huge! Someone's redecorated. I don't like it. Excuse me? Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, the woman turns around and the doctor looks at her in shock. It's his 13th incarnation. Oh, sorry for intruding, you two. But you wouldn't happen to know where the doctor is, would you? The doctor and Sophie look at each other and then back at the 13th doctor, who then smiles at the two of them. <sighs> Doctor Who Dystopia, a Geek in the Fireplace production. The Doctor, played by Harry Aspinmore. Sophie, played by Sophie Weller. Mother Superior Frouse, played by Courtney McCree. Des, played by Thomas Bohanna. Katerina, played by Maisie Crundon. Victims of the Sisterhood. Played by Faisan Nazir 
and Bryony Martha. Sister Sicarius, played by Rachel Johnston. Sister Azenus, played by Bryony Martha. And Sister Ochidere and the 13th Doctor, played by Abby Davidson. Written and directed by Lewis C. Baird. Narrated and edited by Max Dark. Sound credit given to zabsplat.com. The Doctors and Sophie will return in Genesis of the Weeping Angels.